Since 1956, Rocky Mountain PBS has served the educational and cultural needs of Coloradans. As a Colorado television pioneer, operations for this PBS station, known then as KRMA, may have resembled science fiction. Take a look at some of the highlights that allowed KRMA to grow with the changing times and advance its technology while adhering to its core vision. January 30th, 1956 marked the debut of KRMA as Colorado's first educational television station. Initial broadcasts were limited to two hours on weekday evenings, with most programs telecast live. KRMA's broadcast premiere featured Thimble Theater, a 15-minute studio presentation with puppets, magic tricks, and storytelling. Throughout the 1950s, KRMA broadcast a variety of cultural shows, including The Red Man's America, a series about Plains Indians. With the addition of educational television programs shown in Denver public school classrooms, KRMA viewers could earn GED and college credits just by watching. The 1960s brought both educational and entertaining lineups. The addition of Car Care, a program dedicated to maintenance and repair, received rave reviews from do-it-yourselfers, while moms and dads delighted in tips and tools from Driver Training, a popular show teaching teenagers about safe driving. Have you ever held an alligator? KRMA personality Earl Room broadcast his show, Zoo Time, direct from the Denver Zoo, bringing scary, cuddly, and hungry animals directly into viewers' living rooms. Ragtime Era, a musical show created by producer and pianist Max Moroth, illustrated songs and rhythms of early 20th century music. It was the first KRMA videotaped series distributed to other stations by NET, National Educational Television. Glory Trail made history as the first production intended for international distribution by NET, documenting stories such as the gold rush, cattle drives, and the railroad's westward expansion. KRMA production director Jim Case said it best. We had the right people in the right place at the right time to do great television. Of course, new programming meant increased station costs. To compensate, the station enlisted volunteers to help stage the first televised pledge night in February 1962, followed by the first televised KRMA auction in June 1966. The auction continued as a major task for an active, dedicated corps of volunteers for 44 years. And what about the range of goods and services offered, you ask? Items ranged from original art, cars, and even new homes. During the 1960s, color came to KRMA broadcasts, and so did Mrs. Bird, the local answer to Big Bird of Sesame Street fame. Mrs. Bird and Friends, Olive Owl, Amanda Sue Ellen Ostrich, and Wilbur Weird Bird entertained children and their families on television and at community events. In the 1970s, KRMA volunteers hit the streets with a door-to-door -door campaign called Six Booster. Their efforts secured funding for Saturday morning children's programs and locally produced shows like The Naturalists. KRMA produced and filmed in color across the country. This popular four-part series highlighted the lives of Henry David Thoreau, John Burroughs, John Murr, and Theodore Roosevelt. Back at home, Emmy Award-winning journalist Don Kinney created The State of Colorado, a news commentary program that remained on air for 22 years. The 1980s brought Super 6 School News, the longest-running show in KRMA's history. Fourth, fifth, and sixth grade students were tasked with writing and anchoring their own two-minute news broadcasts. Now back to Josh and Whitney. Initially, 30 schools in the Denver Public School System participated. Today, Super School News draws students from all over Colorado and airs regularly between programs. In 1980, Showtime on Ice made its debut. This figure skating spectacular marked the station's first major use of multi-camera remotes and was offered to other PBS stations as a fundraising special. Three years later, KRMA utilized that same technology 
during the first live broadcast of the Colorado Symphony Orchestra. Could the station's future get any better than what we've witnessed? You betcha. 1994 marked KRMA's transition to a 24-hour-a-day broadcasting entity. Then in 1996, KRMJ Grand Junction joined KRMA, a major step toward broadcasting statewide. A year later, the two stations adopted one named Rocky Mountain PBS. Two new series dedicated to the special interest of Coloradans were created. Spirit of Colorado introduced viewers to the unique people and places that make the state. Rocky Mountain Legacy immersed viewers in the culture and heritage of Colorado. Two polar bear cubs at the Denver Zoo were the inspiration for the heartwarming documentary Klondike and Snow, a tale of twin polar bears, an hour-long special examining the cubs and the intense human intervention necessary for their survival. Community engagement remained a high priority, and in 1996, Kids Fun Fest was introduced. Originally a Rocky Mountain PBS Kids Club event, the fest is now a full-fledged, free community affair for young children and their parents, hosted throughout the state. Rocky Mountain PBS has established itself as a powerhouse public broadcasting network, but the advent of the internet meant creating a new method for interacting with Coloradans. RMPBS.org was born. At the start of the new millennium, volunteers began looking back at how RMPBS had evolved. Stations archived memories, a volunteer-powered effort led by Laura Sampson and Donna Dickinson was created. To date, the initiative has collected and preserved more than 76,000 documents, film clips and shows, photos, memorabilia, and oral histories documenting a comprehensive history of Rocky Mountain PBS. KTSC Pueblo joined the Rocky Mountain PBS family in June 2000 with two locally produced shows. Isabel. Alaska. That is correct. Matchwits, a high school academic quiz show, extended its reach statewide in January 2014. Homework Hotline helps students after school with their math and science homework. In 2003, Colorado State of Mind, hosted by Greg Dobbs, tackled the state's hot topics in news and events locally and nationally. Now hosted by Cynthia Hessen, the award-winning program continues in its in-depth coverage and balanced reporting. KRMU Durango joined Rocky Mountain PBS in 2004, followed by KRMZ Steamboat Springs in 2007, further broadening the network's coverage throughout the entire state. La Raza de Colorado, a two-part series, explored Colorado's Chicano movement. And in 2007, Veme, a public television Spanish language station, made its Colorado debut. Two years later, Create, a lifestyle channel, brought additional cooking, arts, and gardening programming. Rocky Mountain PBS diversified its network of services in 2013 with the additions of KUVO Radio and iNews. KUVO, established in 1985 as a Hispanic-controlled public radio station, provides a unique blend of local news and cultural information, jazz, blues, and Latin jazz iNews focuses on in-depth public service journalism that is distributed across the state and the country. The network continued to produce documentaries tackling difficult yet important issues. Living with Dying took a revealing look into the lives of Coloradans facing end-of-life decisions. Screenings and panel discussions allowed viewers to ask questions and interact with producers and experts. Urban Res told the story of the Native American upheaval to urban areas and became the only public media produced film selected for the 2014 American Film Showcase. Executive producer and director Lisa Olkin traveled to five cities in Kazakhstan, conducting screenings and seminars on policies featured in the documentary. In 2013, Rocky Mountain PBS launched two new locally produced shows to its lineup. Arts District, a weekly magazine show that collects and curates the best art stories across Colorado and the country. And Colorado Experience, a historical documentary series celebrating the people, places, and events that shaped the state. Rocky Mountain PBS has evolved immensely since its initial broadcast on January 30, 1956. 
Even as this technology changes, one thing remains the same. Its mission of enriching the lives of Coloradans through programs, services, and community partnerships that inform, enlighten, and entertain. Yet it is important to note the network would not be possible without its dedicated volunteers, generous members, and the continuous support of viewers like you.